Hello everybody, Dr. Bill Crawford here, psychologist, speaker, author, host of two PBS specials, here today to talk about the science of optimism. As you can see, this is the lead story in one of my favorite magazines, The Scientific American Mind, and it fits very nicely with my philosophy on life from the top of the mind, where I show individuals and organizations how to access their best by accessing a very specific part of the brain. The quote that I'm using this week is one of my own, and it talks about the difference between avoidance and optimism as a way of life. And it says, the road to success isn't paved with stones of avoidance. In fact, in order to optimize our potential, we must be willing to engage the world optimistically. Would you like that? In order to optimize our potential, we must be willing to engage the world optimistically. In other words, optimism is key to success. Now, there are a lot of studies that validate this, that optimistic people uh, get fewer illnesses, they bounce back from adversity better, they get promoted more, they make more sales. And yet, so many people have a tendency to look at the world and worry and fear about what might happen, almost in a pessimistic way. Let me show you what I mean. Let's look at the concept of a timeline, where we're looking at the past, the present, and the future. And let's assume something not so great happens. Maybe not terrible, but not so great, something bad. And for a while, we feel sad. That's not a problem. The problem is we, if we start generalizing that to the future, like, uh-oh, what if something else happens? And, and, and then what if this happens? And then, oh my God, what if this happens? It reminds me of a story that was told to me by uh, my mentor, Dr. Robert Pennington, psychologist, great guy. He talked about the bag lady syndrome. He said, you know, sometimes what we do is when something bad happens, we start worrying about the future as if, like, uh, let's assume I'm late on an assignment at work, and oh my goodness, and what if I get fired, and, and then I'll lose my house and my spouse, and I'll become a bag lady, and someone will steal my bag, and I'll die. See, the problem is when we start imagining the future pessimistically, we experience that in the present. It hasn't happened yet, but it colors how we feel, how we think in the present. For those of you who have followed my life from the top of the mind philosophy, you know this also engages a very specific part of the brain, this lower 20% of the brain that actually keeps us from creating solutions. What I suggest we do instead is if something bad happens, go, okay, now what if I made this happen? And then what if I made this happen? And then what if I made this happen? Now, there are two factors here that are important. Number one, we're not just expecting this to happen to us. We're talking about making it happen, creating the future. And we're not talking about this. We're not talking about someone showing up with a check for a million dollars and solving all our problems or winning the lottery or whatever. We're talking about what is known as realistic optimism. Dr. Martin Seligman, who is a president of the American Psychological Association for quite a while, wrote a book called Learned Optimism, and he brings this realistic optimism into play and contrasts it with what he calls Pollyanna optimism, which is just expecting everything's going to work out and all i got to do is just sit back and think about it. Realistic optimism has us creating steps to making it happen, and more importantly, it has us imagining and experiencing these things happening in the present. See, the truth is the only time we can affect how we feel and how we think is the present. So I'm going to encourage you to ask yourself, when something bad happens, we can feel down for a while, but then we want to start imagining, okay, what are we going to do about that? What are we going to create about this? Or are we just going to just imagine horrible things happening and try to create success or pave the road to success with stones of avoidance? I'm going to encourage you instead to recognize the value of engaging this upper 80% of the brain, this creative part of the brain that starts to imagine how we can make the future happen in this very purposeful way, in a way that we would teach to someone we love. I hope this has been valuable. Each month, I, and each week actually, I try to bring these videos to you 
And this is the first one of a brand new year. For those of you who are viewing this at another time, it's also just the beginning of a process. And I think at the beginning of a process, we can be very purposeful about how we imagine that process, and especially how we imagine creating that process. Therefore, here's to you, bringing more clarity, confidence, and creativity to everything you do, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.